Ooh, we're at the moon. Hello, welcome to the moon. Good morning. Oh yeah, it is morning over in France. We're looking through a Mead 8-inch ACF. Does anyone want to zoom into a specific crater? We can do that. And probably in about five minutes, we're going to go over to Jupiter. Hello, hello from Chile. Wow, that looks so pretty. I love the craters there on the terminus. That's uh, right where the shadow meets the white, the, the light part. I'm going to grab some tea. I'll be right back. Yeah, zoom in a little bit. Why not? Right, now I'm going to start moving around a little bit. Nice and slow. In that year, Luna 3 stole the first furtive photos of the moon's hidden side. A mere 10 years later, Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stood triumphant on the lunar surface. Mankind took its first baby steps in its quest for the star. You don't need to be an astronaut to explore the surface of the moon. Try exploring the moon yourself. Just think of the moon as the first stop on a journey to deeper and deeper space. It is the easiest object in the sky to observe. Binoculars and small telescopes reveal endless details of its composition. Some features, such as dark and light patches, Bright craters and mountain ranges are visible Hello. even to the naked eye. The first thing you'll notice is that the surface is made up of light and dark patches. The dark patches are known as mare or seas. They were once believed to be bodies of water, perhaps lakes on the moon. In fact, they are ancient volcanic flows. The lighter patches are called peri and are commonly known as the highlands. <laughs> These Thank you. The elevated areas and mountains. Now look again. What do you see scattered across the entire surface? Everywhere Let's go back up here. You will see impact oh, Evidence of strikes by asteroids, comets. Let's zoom out again. More than a half a million craters can be counted. And look closely at the craters. All right, in about a minute, we're going to go on over to Jupiter. Oh, that's a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> What is the highest point on the moon? Anyone know? I would like to know. So would Michelle. No, no one's ever asked that question before. All right, I better move on over to Jupiter before you ask any more questions about the moon that I don't know. <laughs> But when the moon is in a crescent phase, the 
sun shines on the surface at an angle, then deep shadows can be observed. Here we go. We're going to move on over to Jupiter. Yeah, so I'm going to brighten this up Try observing the moon with just so we know where we're aiming. It is a very thin crescent. Note how deep the shadows appear. The boundary between That's cool. areas okay. lit by the sun and dark areas. Yeah, we're going to a really big planet. Uh, their database is a little outdated. They said 63 moons. I think it's actually like 72 right now or something. Just gonna get a little bit closer. Okay, there it is. Cool, that's Jupiter. You can kind of see its moons. I see four moons. See them? Yeah. There's one very close to it. Alright, let's see if we can play around with the cloud bands. We're gonna try and dim it a little bit. Oh yeah, that's so cool, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I've got a, uh, a variable polarizing filter on here so we can dim it as we want. Let me know if that's too dim if you want me to make it brighter. So that is the filter that you can like make it dimmer and brighter. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, I feel like it's really useful. Yeah, that works really well. Can you see it pretty good? Mm -hmm. You can see a couple stripes on it. Yeah. I feel like I can kind of make out some moons here and there now and then. <coughs> but that's really cool though. Mm -hmm. so I'm not seeing any moons, but I still think that the stripes on that's really cool. You see a great red spot at all? No, I don't see the great red spot on there. Mm -mm. Here, I'll make it a little brighter so we can see the moons. Oh, I can see one just to the right there. Oh yeah, I can see it too. I'll try and center it. Yeah, this is a planet Jupiter that we're looking at. Okay, I kind of got it centered. Sorry, everybody. Let me just put this back. Right there. Okay, cool. And then we're going to zoom in. Ooh, that's awful. Ooh. I don't see anything really. Mm -mm. I like it like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you can see a little bit of heat in the atmosphere that's getting in our way. And that's why it looks all shaky like that. But yeah, that bright star you're looking at out there. That's definitely Jupiter. That's so cool that you're looking at it, too. Right, should we jump on over to Saturn, you think? Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. How does that sound to everybody else? Let me know if you want me to stick on this for a minute or two or jump on over to Saturn.
Is that a red spot at seven o'clock? Seven o'clock. Oh, like, hmm. No, I don't really see one. I'm not really seeing anything. Do you think it's out of focus? No, I think it's focused well. Get out of here, mosquitoes. <laughs> All right, we're going over to Saturn then. Let's do this. As usual, we brighten things up so we know where we are. Oh, that's so cool. Sorry, I just want to look one more time. Look at those moons. <laughs> those are so cool. <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah, that looks Look so at that. Good. I think that's Callisto way the heck out there on the left, just yeeting around. All right, sorry. This is our telescope. Let's go on to Saturn. Solar system Saturn. Oh, wow. I didn't have to move that far, did it? <laughs> Really close to it. Ninety-five times larger than Earth. Is that? A, a, I, right. Right. Tell me if you see anything in there. Really? Yeah, I'm right on it. Would that hole be getting in the way at all? No, no, not really. Oh, there it is. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, it was over on that side. Oh, there it is. My bad. Yay. Oh, Sorry. it's so cute. Sorry, it's so everybody. small. There it is. Okay, we got it. Hmm. You know, I'm going to play with the focus. How about that? Dare I? What the most striking object in a telescope is, and they'll all agree that it's Saturn. Saturn is the second of the gas giants in our system. Thank you. Here, we're going to try and focus it just a little bit. Saturn turns very quickly on its axis, with a day lasting only about Okay, so that's worse. The rings of Saturn are perhaps one mile thick. No oh, beautiful. Ah, there nice. we go. Okay, that's much better. That looks way better. You know, I bet if we were looking at Jupiter like that, we probably would have saw that red spot, like you were saying. Maybe you just have better focused eyes. Who knows? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh, I can kind of make out the Cassini division. Oh, yeah, I can see it too. That's really pretty. Yay. Welcome to Saturn. NASA recently announced that they have discovered a hydrocarbon lake at Titan's South Pole. That's right, they found a hydrocarbon lake at South Pole. Yeah. Titan's South Pole is gnarly. <coughs> they actually landed on Titan. You can check out footage of it, it's pretty cool. It's so beautiful there. Cryogenic lakes and rivers that would freeze you instantly. Tholins floating around in the air. Greasy little orange things. It sounds like a place I want to stay for vacation. Oh yeah. I don't know about you. That sounds lovely. It's like the horrifying realization you get with telescopes. It's like, oh my god, every other planet is completely inhospitable it's <laughs> you can't go to any of these places earth is wonderful i love it here Earth is the only one you can jo enjoy yeah thank you i personally think that we live on the prettiest planet too yeah if you look at it from space for mm -hmm. sure just like we were you were telling me to look up earlier mm -hmm. 
those uh, Apollo photos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those were really cool. Like, it was so beautiful. I feel like they're the only ones that really got that far out. Mm -hmm. And there are some, like, geosatellites. I love, I love seeing the moon uh, from behind. Oh, yeah. How dark it was. Yeah, it almost looked brown because of the, like, shadow and how dark it was. Really cool. I'm going to try and brighten this up a little bit and see if we can see any of the moons. I know Titan's out there. Titan. Nope, that's as bright as it gets. Jeez. Well, that's still pretty cool. I'm just being really picky with my tracking. Kronos, the god of time. All right, y'all want to jump over to something else? Maybe a double star or something. Ooh. We could do uh, Albiro. That's pretty close by. All right, let me know if you want me to stay on Saturn or go to a double star. Welcome to space. It's been waiting a long time to meet you. And we could also go back to the moon if anyone wants to see that. All right, I'm gonna call the next target then. We're going to Vega. I wanna see Vega. All right, hold on to your hats, everybody. We're going to a star. Oh, double star? All right, you called it. We'll go to Albiro. I have a huge menu of stars. Hold on, one second. Endure the beauty of <laughs> Saturn's rings while I uh, select a, a cool star to look at. Al Alberi I think it's Alberio? Alright, let's go. Thanks for joining me, by the way, everybody. Space is such a big place. I hate to do it by myself. I also have Cheyenne out here helping me. Am I helping? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Moral support. <laughs> oh, wow, look, there it is. That looks so good. I think that's it. Looks like it. Oh. Here, let me see if I can zoom out and show you. There's that. It's just, it should be one star, right? But no, this is, this is two stars. So if you go outside and you look for Cygnus, which is the uh, swan in the sky, the head of the swan looks like one star. But when you zoom in on it with a telescope, it's actually two stars. And this is a, a pretty common thing, actually, out there in the solar system. Here, let's get this focused, because that, that one star over there on the left looks like two stars by itself. It's just <laughs> wobbling all over the place. I bet it's just out of focus. And is this one the one that's two different colors? It should be two different colors, but I wonder if our filter is stopping that from happening. Oh, that looks a little bit better. Awesome, cool. Now, uh, I think our filter is just blocking out some of the light, and so we can't see the true colors of these, but the one on the left there should be very, like, orangey when you look at it, and then one, the one on the right should look either white or blue. But I just see it almost as, like, a grayish blob.
that is really cool. Hmm. I'm gonna play with the focus a little bit more. Yep, that's that's the sweet spot right there. Okay, all right, I give up. But now let's move on to I think Alcor, another double star, just to show you that there are more. Hello. <coughs> We're going all the way over to the Big Dipper which is the second star in the Big Dipper, the star we're going to, Alcor. And once I'm done showing you this star, I'm gonna go back over to the moon real quick because there's a tree getting in the way and it looks awesome. It's, all, it's like a spooky tree with a moon behind it. Okay, so let's zoom out. We're looking for another double star. Anything? Oh no, don't run away from me, double star, come on. Oh, there it is. Oh cool, we got it. Okay, look. So when you look up there in the sky, you should see two stars in the second handle, or the second star of, the second star in the handle of the Big Dipper should be two stars when you look at it. And the fainter one up above, you'll see in the, here in our image, is just one star. And the brighter star below is actually two stars. What the frick is, what's go, what, what? Space, why are you doing this to us, guys? What, what's going on? <laughs> so, yeah, you're actually looking at three stars when you look up there. I, I, I'm not gonna hurt your brain too hard, but there are more stars out there than, than beats the eye. Um, I don't wanna tell you how many stars are actually in this little vicinity that we're looking at but just yeah it's actually more than two so yeah double stars galore they're all over the place okay now that i've shown you two double stars we're gonna go back to the moon real quick and then probably wrap it up being eaten alive by very hungry mosquitoes. Mm, nom, 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 nom. nom, nom. Here we go. Moon. Yeah, it's doing this way so it doesn't uh, have a cord wrap, yeah. And this is just for anyone who joined in and hasn't seen the moon yet, tonight. And I'm hoping to get like a little bit of a tree in front of it, so it looks really cool. A little spooky. Mars? Mars even out? While strong enough to influence our ocean tides, lunar gravity is relatively weak. In fact, a 180-pound band would weigh only as much as... Definitely show you Mars once it comes out. 
As it synchronously revolves around our planet, the whole yeah, thank you. Oh, there it is. Space exploration entered the new phase on July 20th, 1969, when the first human touched lunar soil. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. No object dominates the night sky like our moon. It is also a striking object during daylight hours as well. Yeah, it's true. We got some day photos of the moon. It's really cool. Our partner in the cosmos has very little atmosphere. On contrary to old wives' tales, it is not made up of green cheese. It is mostly made up of. Gotta mention that it's not made of cheese. Moon is not made of cheese. Popular belief. 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 Popular Still really cool. During the 1960s and 70s, 12 United States astronauts visited the moon. In the early 21st century, several countries have announced plans to send spacecraft with astronauts to the moon. The moon. Perhaps since the days when our first ancestors walked this planet, Ooh, you can see this really cool mountain range up here. And felt a primal stirring to reach out beyond the oh, earth cool. and grasp the mysteries of space. The moon is our constant companion in our journey around the sun. Right there. Oh, wow, you can see all the ridges, too, in the Maria. See, it's not perfectly smooth. God, this this made so many people angry when Galileo figured this out with a telescope. He was like, wait a minute. The moon's not perfect. It's not a perfect like, surface. It's, the celestial bodies aren't perfect, you know? Like, they're not... And then the church was like, yo... No, wrap that up. You can't be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, nah, that's witchcraft. Dude. Yeah. It was all divinely, you know, designed and everything. Really... Brutal. Poor Galileo. Mm -hmm. Galileo is so brave. Just think of the moon as the first stop on a journey to deeper and deeper space. It is the easiest object in the sky to observe. That looks great. Binoculars and small telescopes reveal endless details of its composition. Yeah, Whoa, well, what's going on over here? Look at all these craters. Down, down below. Oh, it's getting sticky. Let's see. There we go. That's crazy. Is that a bat? Now look again. For a child or something? Everywhere you demon? look, you will see impact craters. Evidence of strikes by asteroids, comets, and meteorites. More than a half a million craters can be counted. That's really cool. And look closely at the craters. You will see craters within craters within craters. <laughs> this suggests that the impacts have occurred over a large period of time, over billions of years, in fact. One crater stands out from the rest, and you can see it with your naked eye. This is the crater Copernicus, and it appears to have bright streaming rays emanating from it. Other important craters are Tycho and Clavia. Rays are quite dramatic. They are created by material thrown up by meteor and asteroid impact. Many craters have very steep walls. These are difficult to observe when the moon is full. But when the moon is in a crescent phase, the sun shines on the surface at an angle. Then deep shadows can be observed, and a sense of depth can be perceived. Try observing the moon with a telescope when it is a very thin crescent, and note how deep the shadows appear. The boundary between areas lit by the sun and dark areas is known as the terminator. This is the division between day and night. Features that look like dried up riverbeds are called rills. Rills are dried up lava flows. Some rills are geological fault lines. Study of rocks brought back from the moon reveals that it is made of hardened lava. Aluminum, calcium, iron, and magnesium 
among other elements, were also discovered. The moon contains very little metal. There is no atmosphere and no weather. No air, no clouds, no rainfall. <laughs> Films taken during the Apollo mission reveal astronauts I know, I agree. Noon is fake. I hate, is I hate noon. The the there is and no such time as noon. <laughs> that's why I always wake up after noon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're just like, no, I hate, I hate noon. I refuse to be How awake and acknowledge it. Forward? Right. No one knows for sure. But the most common theory says that a large comet or asteroid... You can kind of see aliens. Of years ago, which threw a great deal of matter in space. But I don't know what kind of privacy laws they have, so I try not to stare at them too much. Millions of years of gravitational forces eventually moon? formed the moon. Yeah. <laughs> the moon is in its first quarter. The first quarter moon occurs when the western half of the Earth-facing side of the moon is illuminated. Wow, this by telescope sunlight. really does a the sun's light does falls a good on job. The mm -hmm. at an angle. In the sky, the first quarter moon is visible before sunset can be seen during the early evening hours. All right, everyone. I think we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining in. Next time, uh, maybe we'll go to like a globular cluster or something like that. Check out Hercules. Hercules, Hercules. And until then, this is Space Time with Robert signing out. I love you all. Good, goodbye. Love you. Bye. <laughs>